Welcome to our flower dissection lab. Your materials for today are your two lab worksheet papers, one labeled flower structures and one labeled flower observations, clear tape, a scalpel, and you can use a knife if you don't have a scalpel, and a flower. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do, according to your procedures, is to cut off your sepals. And sepals are usually green, but on lilies they are actually not. They are those outside petal looking structures, and there are three of them on a lily, so we're going to take off those three outer petal looking structures. Because they look so much like petals, they're actually called tepals instead of sepals. Um, there are a couple of different plants that have this and um, we're going to just cut them off and consider them as sepals, although yours, if you're not using a lily, may actually be green. And I apologize that it's a little confusing to not have green sepals on our lily, but it's just got so many other structures that are so big and easy to see that for the video it just made the most sense to use a lily. So you're going to take your sepals and you're going to tape them down onto your flower structures page. And then you're going to label them and all of these steps are according to the directions and the procedures on your lab. And I'm going to label these sepals or tepals because of our lily. And for sure you should read what the function of a sepal is and all of your structures and then you are going to record that function on your flower observation page. And then it will also ask you questions throughout the procedure and you can write the answers to those questions over on the right hand column of your observation page. And the question for this was how many sepals does your flower have? And my answer is three. Yours might be a little bit different. So I'm not going to record all the rest of the observations, but you should have that whole page filled out as you go. So the next step is to take off the petals of your flower. And remember to be very careful with your scalpel, especially if it's new, it could be very sharp. If you want to use scissors for this, that works fine too. So we're going to take off our petals, and you should read the function of petals on your lab procedure. And then we're going to take those petals and tape them down onto the paper. And you can see there is a little bit of a difference between the sepals and the petals on the lily. Although they look a lot more similar than a lot of plants. And we're going to label those once they're taped down. And then again, don't forget to do your observation page and record the function of the petals and answer your observation questions. Our next step is to take off the stamens of the flower. The stamens are the male part of the flower and they have two sections. They have a filament, which is a long stalk, and then they have the bulby large part at the top and that is called the anther. So we're going to take those off as close to the receptacle as you can and do that for all of them. And I'm going to try to be careful here as I'm taking them off because you don't want to go through that center structure as we're going to look at that next. So you're just taking off the stamens, which are on the lily are the brown parts. And the next step is to tape those stamens down. And one of those stamens you're going to pull out because we're going to label that separately. So we'll tape them all down. 
separate that other one. And so we'll label those all stamens, since that's the complete term. And then for that individual stamen, we will tape that one down and label the anther, which is that top portion that holds the pollen, and the filament. And again, read about the functions of each of these structures in your lab and answer them on your observation page. And then finally, the last thing we're going to look at is the female part of the flower. It has a stigma on the top and then a style which holds it up and an ovary at the bottom. And the ovary on my Lily is not very big, but some flowers have much rounder ovaries, so it would be easier for you to see. We're going to cut that ovary off at the bottom where it attaches to the receptacle. And then we will tape that down onto the paper. And you're going to label the stigma, which is the top, the style, which is the tall portion, and then the ovary, which is at the bottom. And all of those are part of the pistil, or the female part of the flower. And you can read the description of what each of those parts do in your lab procedure. And then if you want, you can actually cut the ovary open. You can't really see anything in mine because it's not very large yet and it's not mature, um, but if you want to cut your ovary open and see if you can find some ovules in there, feel free. So this is what the finished portion of our flower structures page looks like. And don't forget to have finished your flower observations and the discussion questions, and then you are finished with your lab.